Thank you, sir. I don't know. I don't know what it was that I breathed in, but it didn't want to continue going. It wanted to stop. Uh, let me remind you, check the bulletin board. There are some pictures of the youth trip. Uh, there's also a, a benefit seen this Saturday night at uh, Pine Forest Baptist, side on Pine Forest Road. Uh, Thankful Few is going to be singing. I don't know of anybody else, but... I know they're supposed to be there, and there will be some refreshments, but they do want to receive an offering and so forth. It's a benefit thing. And please don't forget Randy Randall and Rosemary in your prayers. Okay? Remind you also, if you'd like to participate in this prayer, pray for 31 days, you know, see me, and we'll either get you a booklet or whatever. And Brother Charles, you mentioned... The promise booklet for Sunday school. Yes. If you, if they have several copies, we'll be glad to purchase. You know, a few uh, they were down to the wire on that, but I'll check again. <laughs> Maybe okay, they got resupplied. Okay. <laughs> if they have some, then we'll we'll see about seeing what we can do about getting a few. All right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I've got a prayer request. Um, Friday, they're taking Alyssa's stitches out, and she may go into labor. After that. And her expected due date right now is? September 19th. Okay. Well, praise the Lord. If she delays that two or three days, she might match up with somebody else's birthday I know of. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we do that now, Pastor? What's that? Pray for her. Sure. Would you like to sit in for stand in for her? Of course. wisdom, Lord, beyond even what they've been trained, and let them do the right thing, God, in your holy name. Lord, lift her up and let this baby be healthy and full term. In Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Turn with me to Genesis tonight, if you would. Genesis chapter 9. Way back up at the front end. Praise the Lord. We're just happy to have all of you with us tonight. It's just it's just great. It, it's, we used to think about Wednesday night being the smallest number we have, but now we're competing with Sunday night, and, and it's really good when Wednesday and Sunday, you know, turn out to each other. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Genesis chapter 9. I'd like to start with the first verse. Now chapter 9 is right after Noah went through the flood and so forth and the ark had come to rest and they opened the doors and God, you know, let them all come out and everything. In chapter 9 verse 1 it says, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require, at the hand of every beast will I require, and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. And you, 
Be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Praise the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your covenant. We thank you for your grace, goodness, and mercy unto us. And Lord, we ask you tonight to just touch and minister and help us, we pray now. Lord, we want to say what you want said, and nothing more, nothing less. Thank you. Father, we ask for your anointing tonight. Help us, God, to encourage someone, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. As I mentioned earlier in chapter, you know, 7 and 6 and all those chapters up in there was where the ark was built and those kind of things and the flood came and all the people died and all the animals died and everything and then in chapter 8 the water started moving forth and God brought the ark to the shore and, and they told him and Noah and his wife and his sons and so forth to go out and you know, to let all the rest of them out. And then he come down to chapter 9 and he made a covenant. And I wanted to mention several things tonight. This covenant of the rainbow, the bow as, we, as God called it, or the rainbow, is a very interesting sign. Mm -hmm. Now, every covenant that I've ever been able to check into everything, there had to be some token or some sign given of that covenant. In every blood covenant on earth that we have any kind of record of, people would cut themselves some way, shape, form, or fashion, and they'd mingle their blood, and that was a blood covenant. Some of it was on the wrist, and some was in the palm of the hand, some were on the arms, and, you know, all various things. Some was an X, and some was just cut. But nonetheless, there was always a sign, and it was a permanent thing. That's why they would cut into the flesh, so that there would be a scar permanently so that anytime you looked at that particular token if you will or that scar or whatever that sign was you would always remember the covenant and remember your portion of that covenant okay now in this particular one God came to Noah and he made a covenant and the token turned out to be a rainbow okay now as I was going over this and studying some of it and I ran across uh, someone else's commentary about it a little bit. I'm going to borrow from them just a little bit tonight on a couple of items at least. But what I wanted to bring your attention to tonight was several things. You'll find in chapter 8 just before where I read God laid down some rules, if you will, and he said, while the earth remains, seed time, harvest, cold, heat, summer, and winter, day and night shall not cease. So, right there, when God reestablished his covenant with mankind, he first set into place what we know as day and night and seasons and so forth, and he said, all of these will remain as long as the earth remains, you will have it. So, when 
Anytime that you look, it's an ordered situation. It's a structured thing. Nobody's going to change it. We are going to have summer, winters. <laughs> we are going to have some rainy days and some hot summer days. We're going to have some cold winter days. And we're going to have some seed time. And we're going to have a harvest and those kind of things. It's just going to happen. You're not going to change it. God set it into place, and that's the way it's going to be from now on. He says, it shall not cease. So as long as this earth is here until it goes up in smoke the next time, <laughs> then it's going to be that way. But also notice that as he blessed Noah and his sons, he said, I'm going to put the fear of you on all the animals and everything so you'll be safe. If I can put that in my words. Essentially, he set another set of order into place, which was man, or man and woman, mankind, would be elevated slightly above all animals so that they were to control those animals or to use those animals as food or as you know, work horses or whatever the case may need to be. But God set it up so that these animals would not be able to overcome man except in extreme situations where if they did, he said, I will require the animal's blood, their life, if they hurt mankind. Okay? So he established some rules, if you will, on earth. Because he said that surely your blood of your life will I require, the hand of every beast will I require. In other words, any animal that would come and kill a man at any time, that beast's life would be, have to be taken for it. Okay, so he established some rules and some law. Then he went on and he established another law between mankind, which is essentially government, if you will. Okay, I'm putting my word on or modern day world on. But that's exactly what he was talking about. He says, mankind... At the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, I'll require the life of man. If man sheds blood, I'll require his blood, or man to shed blood. And it all began here at this point, when God reestablished the earth, because he destroyed everything. Okay? Now I know that if you get with scientists and you start reading all the commentaries and everybody's idea and everything else, they start trying to explain the blood, what uh, the the water wasn't over it, the entire earth, it was over just part of it, and you know there was animals that lived in spite of all that, and there was people that lived, and that's why you got the different, uh, you know, yellow, black, white, uh, and red, and all those other types of people. I don't find that in the book. And according to the book, it was worldwide. And we found evidence of it. They found fossils all over this world and everything. So, I believe the Word of God. Yeah. But I can tell you that God established some things with no